Now we're going to move into visual arts. Axel is a creative entrepreneur, artist, designer, and innovator. His companies work with big name stars and groups in commercial, choreo, and podcast production. Without any further ado, Axel, the stage is yours. Wow, okay. Guys, this is crazy. All of you are crazy. You're amazing. I'm so proud to be a Gale just because like listening of everybody's stories, all the advice, I'm just really proud to actually be on the stage with all of you. So thank you all for making this happen. And last but not least, before I even start, because it's all about the students right now, but before we get there, like students, you know, whatever grade you are, you have the best teachers in the world. Just saying, hands down, they're the people that made us feel safe, safe to fail, safe to go out there and do whatever we wanted. And, you know, I've, I've cried in teachers' arms. I've, I've laughed in teachers' arms. They were the people that really just get us through some of the hardest times in our lives. So, um, you know, really respect them. And uh, just teachers, thank you so much for everything. So let's begin. Um, so, hi, I'm Axel. A little bit about me. Creative entrepreneur. Uh, you know, I also love software. So I do, I work in the arts, but also I mix with the software. We're going to get into it later. Uh, clients from like NASA to Bombardier to Nike down to Justin Bieber and Ariana Grande. So you're like, probably like, what the hell does he even do? Well, I'll tell you in this super extra video that I'm about to show. But before that, if anybody has to go, TLDR about this. Um, having multiple passions is okay. You can like multiple things. You don't need to do just one thing. Please network, network your butts off. It goes so much further than you could even believe. And I'll get to that too. Do what you love. I promise you the money comes. I promise, I promise, I promise, I promise. You're gonna be like, oh, I don't know if my crochet business is gonna work out. Oh, it's gonna work out. You just need to go and keep pushing. Last but not least to the parents, not everybody needs a PhD. Just gonna start right there. Here we go. And here's my super extra video that we've made. Axel Villamil, artist, designer, and innovator. With a tough childhood, he found himself falling in love with dance in the basement of his church. He's a fellow multi-passionate creative. He is changing the way we see art and technology. To him, the illogical and the logical are one. He claims that the first time he freestyled in the cruise circle was his turning point. I uh, developed an online app that tracks and measures face, movement, and music. Wait a minute, you created that. That is genius. Wow. He realized that dance could bring him confidence and joy. Just how big the market? How many studios? How many dancers? How with? many studios? I didn't realize are... dance was that. People like to dance. You have, MLSC, you have dancers that are using it. You have to prove this go-to-market strategy. Wow, this guy is extra. I'm sorry about that. Sorry. So that's that's so extra. <laughs> but we're here, you know. Come on, Cameron Heights. Let's go. Um, I was co-chief, so that's why I'm super pepped all the time about CHCI. Uh, and hey, don't get it twisted. This is how I looked in grade nine. Uh, this was the progression. I promise you the glow up, it happens. The glow up happens. So if you don't feel you're, you're there, the brace will come, the braces will come off, you know, the body will figure itself out if it happens. So just get ready for it. It's exciting, but uh, you know, sometimes you just gotta deal with those those years. Um, Cameron was. You know, I, I was co-chief. I, I did a lot of dancing there. I was in the IT program. It was such a fun time uh, just because of the people around me, um, especially definitely the ones that were with me were, uh, hold on, Ed, definitely Eddie Kim. Uh, he was every like Asian parent's dream. He was my dream. I was like, I want to be Eddie Kim because he was like top Asian. Um, and then there's Annabelle Fleming. Uh, you know, she was like the cool fashion arts girl that was on horses. And I was just like, oh my God, I wanna also ride horses, but you know, and then, you know, you got Patrick and Daniel. I was like, oh, the cool musicians. So, you know, I, it, it was a very, you know, great time. So start with episode one with the origins. I'm just like all of you, super scared coming out of high school. 
be real. Super scared. Nobody has their shit together. I'm sorry for shit is the highest swearing I will get to today. I promise. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Um, I was under a lot of pressure, immigrant parents. So if you're an IB, you're not an IB by choice. I'm going to be real. Uh, you're put there by your parents. And I'm just talking truth. Um, and when you go through it, it's a very, it was a tough time. It was hard. It was a very, I think it was harder than university. So for everybody that's going through that, please uh, keep trucking. Uh, uh, group four, all of that stuff, I remember. I don't know. I kind of just put that memory behind me. Um, but it was a good time. It, it builds your strength. Last but not least, I was extremely confused about my path because I was like, I don't know, you know, what I want to do. I love, you know, math. Um, I love other things, um, but I, I, I knew what I liked. So I knew I had a bunch of things that I liked. So let's talk about episode two right now, which is your passions. All of you have them. And you're just probably lying to yourself when you say you don't have a passion. You, you, you probably are. So these were my passions, at least some of them. Uh, singing, math, acting, dancing, film, tech, I loved it all. Um, but you know, society told me, you know, it doesn't really fit together. Uh, and I was really scared about that. Cause I was just like, you know, why can't I do multiple things? So it's actually funny in grade 11, grade 12, I started a production company called Red Label Studios. And it was so bad. <laughs> Basically here's an episode two, it was so bad. I was so bad, I couldn't, film oh my gosh so bad but this is where you start you start bad and you get great so here's me crying over pizza let me explain this picture I had no money this is the start of university I had my production business at like $200 a pop for a video uh, my girlfriend sent me pizza just to feed me and the craft dinner in Arizona was me like waiting for a client's um, payment to come in but I had to live on that for a week, guys. So if you can live on craft dinner in Arizona for a week straight off of the dollar store with $2.50 in your pocket, you know what? I think you're going to be ready. So school, right? I was super blessed to get into the University of Toronto. Um, but, you know, I kind of did a double degree, double degree. And you're going to be like, so what did you do it in? Well, it was computer science and new media studies. I'm learning about you know, finite state automatons, shout out, shout out Eddie. And then we have on the right side, you know, we're trying to look at the arts and think about Lacan's film mirror theory and understand why Tarantino chose this character and blah, 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 blah. So you have two very different worlds and my head was just ping ponging everywhere. And again, I was really self-conscious because I'm like, I don't feel like, you know, this is viable in the world. And then I said, screw it. That's not what it says, but Kev said, I can't say that. So. Um, I, you know, I said, screw it. Let's throw out the norm, right? And I think a lot of people, I was getting a lot of criticism, especially from my family. And they were saying, you know, you're like this doer of all, master of none. You're never going to get anywhere. And I actually did a, a TEDx talk on this where I actually revealed the real phrase back in its origins was actually doer of all, master of none, but oftentimes better than master of one. And I think today is definitely the biggest things, right? You know, you're all on TikTok, you're on Instagram. Do you know how those videos are made? You know, there's a great actors, you know, you're taking your phone, you're gonna, you know, mouth your words, be a great actor. But at the same time, you gotta edit that thing. You gotta know how to post it. So there's a lot of fields being mixed together while you're just doing something so simple. And in today's world, especially in the marketing world where I live in and in tech, you can't just be good at one thing. Um, Eddie works in AI, so he's probably seen you know, you bring in a specialist that knows about specific things. So that helps him and his AI, his team and his dev team learn about what they need to do or how to code it properly. So I decided to do the exact same thing with business. And I decided to join my big passion for dance as well as for tech. And we just got coded. We just, you know, we started coding, you know, um, picked up some buddies from the comp sci uh, classes. I definitely don't look like a CS person. And Eddie definitely dropped that on like on the head of the hammer or head of the nail where it's like, I don't need a lab coat, you know, to look like a scientist. And I don't need to dress a certain way to look like a computer scientist, but we got ahead to start coding. Look how ugly it was, guys. It was so ugly, but that's where you start. It starts ugly. So just remember that. We moved to medium fidelity, moved to version two. It looked like Chinese checkers. And then ba-boom, got the version three. And now we're here. I'm just gonna play another video.
okay, cool. So that's stage key. You know, I created this app by merging my passions for dance and tech. And uh, we made this productivity tool that's used for performers. So that's where um, you see a lot of those artists being using it. So it's actually in, available in 24 countries uh, worldwide. I had somebody from Estonia message us. They're like, hey, how do I use this? Which was weird to say that Estonia, you know, has dance. And I didn't know that. Um, that's me being ignorant, but it was really cool. Um, and we got to use it for the Raptors. This was a huge piece for us. Uh, we, U of T featured us in an, an app or in a newsletter and somebody from the Raptors hit us up and we actually got featured in the championship um, uh, the time when they were winning and our logo was on every time. So it was such a huge, uh, huge accomplishment for, for all of us and, and the team. And, you know, it was a, a team of people that really worked so hard. We took the chances uh, to make this thing happen. It, and, you know, Timbaland was there too. He called it genius. Uh, I wanted to cry, shit my pants. Um, and like laugh all at the same time because I didn't really realize how crazy this was because he was like a hero. And if anybody who doesn't know Timbaland, he's a super producer, probably every beat that you've listened to, worked with every artist. He's the dude in charge of verses, things like that. So so yeah, it's my dog. Um, and then we got to use it for Disney Zombies. One of the choreographers uh, ended up using it too. So there's a lot of use for it. Last but not least, we ended up on Dragon's Den, which was really cool. Uh, but guys, Let's take it back. Everything looks so much fun, but we didn't get the deal. Um, that's just life sometimes, you know, we fail. And it always turns around, but we'll get there. So let's move to mentors really quickly. Mentors was huge for me. Um, if it wasn't for a lot of the mentors, I wouldn't be where I am right now. And I literally want to give you all advice is just <laughs> eat shit and go through the fire. That's the phrase to say, you really have to work for free sometimes. You really have to learn. You have to reach out, do your... If you're coming to me and say, I want to be a music producer, Axel, I'm like, well, you got your phone and Instagram and there's and message 60 people because you'll get there and you'll get an internship. So you really just got to put in the work, but also prove yourself. And the main thing about being in the creative industry is trust. If I don't trust you, I'm never going to use you. You could be really bad, but if I trust you and I like you, I'm probably going to be used. Also, humble yourself. It's okay not to know. It's okay not to know. And and uh, I think there's a... Uh, Patrick, you said it really well, where it's like, ask for help, you know, it's okay. I think the biggest thing that I learned was saying no and also realizing that I don't know everything and there's other people that do. Uh, and don't be the best, sit where the best are because you will be the best when you do sit with them. And how's that work? So let's transition. So remember, sit where the best are. Network, it's not who you know, it's who knows you. So let me tell you about a quick story. I've never gotten a job through an interview in my life, ever. Uh, I kind of just met people along the way, or I guess, you know, made really good relationships with founders and CEOs. And um, my first dev job was at a, a billboard company. And he's just like, love what you do. Want a job? And I was like, okay, sure. And sometimes that's just how the world works. Everybody thinks that interviews are the only way to get through. It's not. There's other ways to get through. And um, you just really need to show yourself and be trusted. So back to Red Label Studios, it was really cool that, you know, I was doing stuff for $200. I was starving, eating pizza from the dollar uh, and, and craft dinner and Arizona from iced tea from the dollar store. But we grew into this huge business where we started working with some of the best brands out there from $200 budgets to $140,000 budgets um, and just creating, getting paid to create. It is so cool to say that, to say that, you know, I know a lot, of, a lot of people are in the position too, where you get to get paid to create or get paid to do what you love. And, you know, we definitely hit that there. Um, I got to meet a lot of cool people. I got to work uh, and, and meet Director X. Uh, and I was there in the office during the hotline bling drop for the music videos. And that's because my mentors brought me there. You know, I got to go to the parties with with Director X and go and like with the huge production parties in Toronto. But it's because through mentorship, and also eating, eating shit, um, you know, I was noticed because of my work. And uh, it was funny when I first met Director X, uh, I definitely think Drake and his people were in a room somewhere, but he showed me the treatment of, which is like a kind of like an outline of hotline bling. He's like, all these dances are planned. And it was, uh, it was a whole story. So it was super cool. Um, it's a great time. And last but not least, so we remember Dragon's Den. I told you how I failed and you know, it, it was bad. But if you see that lady, right there in the blue. That's Michelle Romano, big investor, 
now Unicorn. Uh, we're homies now. We work together. Um, and it's just full circle because <laughs> we, she, she asked me to direct her stuff because I understand technology, but I also understand how to make things look good. So, you know, really bridging those things together. Um, she runs a huge financial tech company uh, that is now unicorn status. So, you know, she's been giving me a lot of the opportunity. And even on top of that, after, you know, having her trust me so much, we started a business together uh, and she's a partner. Uh, and Obi is, is her sales guy, but she's a partner in the business as well. When we went from uh, in six months to a $1.2 million, $1 million evaluated business um, right away. So it was, it was quite a, a quick ride, but she, she does not stop. That lady's a beast. Anyways, let's get to perspective. This is like the, the, the learning moments where I really want you to pay attention and take in. If you haven't seen this picture before, it's huge. Uh, it means a lot to me. Uh, so just to describe it, you see this guy juggling. It's the performance act. A lot of the musicians probably like feel this really, really hard where you see, you don't see the broken plates that he's worked on and rehearsed for so long that nobody sees, right? So the perspective that you might see out of me or all the alumni here is that, wow, they got to where they are or, or they think they made, they made it, but we really haven't. There's still broken plates. There's still a lot more to do. Um, and that's the stuff you don't see. So whenever you see stuff on Instagram or TikTok or whatever, there's a lot more hard work that was behind that. So usually you saw this like diagram of like, this is your plan and this is the reality, right? It's these, these ups and downs. Um, but I don't really agree with these ups and downs. I really think the design can be improved. Um, so I, I think we can, I'm just gonna show you this last video. Uh, and now you see the ups and downs. Everybody's like, oh, this is a positive when you're at the peak and you're at a negative when you're at your lowest. But in reality, you should be flipping this around to a road right? It's more of a 3D perspective where you see the beginning is more of your start and the other end is your destination. And it's only a left and right at this point. It's not ups and downs. And these are just spots you got to go to sometimes. So really don't take, you know, the, the struggles and the pitfalls as, oh, this is the end all and, you know, I'm screwed. That's just the beginning of your journey. So it's up to you if you want to stay at that rest stop or not. Um, and yeah, this is a comparison. So this is kind of where we ended up. You know, we ended up really developing a cool app, um, you know, speaking a lot, being able to mix my passions and everything together and, and meet a lot of great people that can really value, you know, uh, or bring up your business and yourself and elevate everything. So I think last but not least is, you know, this is the last episode, but this is your episode. You know, this is your why. You know, why do you do it? Why do you want to do it? And if you don't know that, then, you know, I would really sit down and think about it um, because there's something in you that you're probably not telling yourself that, yes, I love to do X, Y, and Z. I love to do this. Uh, but you, you have the capabilities. You should believe in yourself. And most of all, you should always be proud of yourselves for just even starting out and trying. So um, that's my presentation. Again, I'm open for questions as well. But please, please, please hit me up on LinkedIn or wherever on Instagram, what have you. And I'm, I'm here to help always.